Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lynn Carson, Chair of the Budget Committee, and I would like to start the meeting now. Welcome, everyone. I really appreciate um, you being here and spending your time, um, especially the committee members on outside, looking through the entire budget and coming up with these questions. I saw your questions and your answers. It's a lot of work, but thank you for bringing your expertise and your time. And um, we might have uh, in-depth discussions tonight, but um, I'm going to be the person that keeps the time. So if you're angry at me, sorry, but I'm going to keep everybody's uh, discussion on point and prompt. So let's begin. We'll begin with roll call. Joe Buck. Here. Ali Afghan. Here. Masin Mbu. Here. Trudy Corrigan. Here. Aaron Rapp. Here. Rachel Verdick. Here. Lynn Carson. Here. Elizabeth Zeller. Here. Steve Dodds. Here. Shannon Grindy. Here. Al Calabria. Here. Shima Salehi. Here. And Gary Ribello. Here. John Wendland is absent. So um, does everybody have the minutes for May 4th? Mm -hmm. Great. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Move to approve the minutes of Great. May second. What would be your change? All right, so there will be an amendment to the minutes. <laughs> oh. Is there going to be a verbal amendment right now, or? Uh, no. Yeah, I think we can uh, we can approve it with the amendment. Yeah. Okay. That's All right. Are we good to approve with the amendment. Okay. Can we have a motion? I move to approve the minutes with uh, uh, Gary Rebello's amendment. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? All right. Motion is carried. Okay. Next on the agenda is our service award. Yes. Distinguished service award that Mayor Buck is going to... Present. Thank you, Chair Carson. Yes, I have the honor tonight of um, bestowing upon two members, two of the Budget Committee Distinguished Service Awards, as this will be their last uh, budget cycle with us, and to honor their years of service. First, uh, Steve Dodds. Steve came, on, and don't, I will come to you, don't worry, you don't have to do anything. Um, came onto the Budget Committee in 2015. It has a very interesting wow. track record here on off, but you've been serving on the Budget Committee for a long time and beyond the Budget Committee, also um, of service to the Parks Committee as well. So Steve, we appreciate all of your years of service to the city serving on the Parks and the Budget Committee. And Al Calabria. Al came onto the Budget Committee in 2019 and has been of tremendous service serving as the uh, recent uh, as chair of the Budget Committee, both of you have bestowed a lot of knowledge and men, um, great, dedicated, uh, open, and model members of the committee, and we appreciate your service. Thank you both. Let's go on to our next point on the agenda, which is public discussion. Correct. All right, we're opening it up to public discussion right now. Yes. Public comment, yeah. Maybe. I had it here, so yeah. Yeah, hello. Okay. Hello, uh, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we oh, can okay, hear you. Okay. okay. Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, I'm, I'm Jeff Harris, 101 Fifth Street, and uh, I've spoken with you a couple of times before. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm going to make this brief. Hello, Jeff. Uh, 
I, I, I have uh, recently been made aware that the uh, the Fifth Street Lake Bay Court Stormwater Project has been proposed for approval. And I, I just want to say uh, on behalf of myself and neighbors and the many uh, Lake Oswego residents who use Fifth Street as a thoroughfare to downtown, uh, a big thank you for that. We really do appreciate that. Certainly that the heavy rainfall last Monday evening was a clear and powerful demonstration of the need for a permanent and effective stormwater management uh, solution. So we really do appreciate your, your approval of this project. Um, and actually, I want to say after listening in on the first two of these meetings, I do have great appreciation for the amount of work and time you've all put in on our behalf. So again, thank you. So I do uh, uh, hope that this continues to move forward and, and, uh, and that the City Council will uh, offer their final approval as well. So again, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your work on our behalf. We do appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff and Judy Harris. Thank you. Do we have any other public comment? Maybe Gail? Gail Walmark and Stephanie Halleck, please come forward. Hello, welcome. Sorry. There you go. I'm Gail Walmark, um, commenting on behalf of Friends of Lusher Farm, where I currently serve as a director. Our mission is to ensure Lusher Farm Park's vibrant future as a treasured hub of urban agriculture, protected open space, and natural resources. Our guidance uh, derives from the 2013 Lusher Area Master Plan, along with the 2017 Lusher Area Ag Plan and the more recent 2021 Lusher Area Task Force Report. Development of the Lusher Area Master Plan, LAMP, was a huge, important effort that included massive public outreach. More than 3,400 public comments were gathered. Ahead of the 2019 parks bond measure in an LOPR commissioned scientific phone survey, two thirds of the 400 respondents strongly supported the proposed bond. And when asked to prioritize 14 potential projects, they ranked lusher projects as follows. Number seven, expansion of urban agriculture. Number eight, construction of an environmental education center and number 11, lusher access and parking. Though the way it was described to develop appropriate access and parking was misleading. The 150 acre parks current and only public access is the original lusher driveway, which is more than inappropriate. It's unsafe and dangerous. And by the way, all three of these were ahead of a new skate park, which was ranked number 13. Lake Oswegans approved the bond, and for a short time, the new access was in the CIP to be funded with bond money. But in recent scramble to cover LORAC and other overruns, it slipped quietly back below the line to unfunded. So in the past 10 years since LAMP, none of its key initiatives have gotten underway. While we're grateful LOPR plans to include the access project in its application for Metro Share funding, we're concerned the strategy is wholly inadequate. Lake Oswego's Metro Share is only $2 million, and Lusher Access will be competing with five other Lake Oswego projects for that pool. We're concerned, too, that Lusher project descriptions in the current proposed CIP are confusing and misleading. I, as I hope you noticed in our packet, pages 11, 12, and 13. It's hard for 150 acres of quiet, enduring farmlands and open space to be heard above the cheers of an aquatic center, a skate park, and other more showy parks and rec projects. But as Lusher Farm Park stewards and advocates, we're here to say implementation of LAMP is well past overdue. Ms. Wallach and Ms. Com Hallock, please. Community members have 
told you it's important. Please make the adjustments our most unique park deserves before approving the budget today. Thank you. Thank you. We will leave uh, discussions for later. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. Ready? Ready. Okay. Let's go. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Carson and members of the Budget Committee and the Councillors. I'm Stephanie Halleck, uh, a new member of the Advisory Board to the Friends of Lusher Farm. I've lived in the Green Tree neighborhood of Lake Oswego for almost 10 years, and thank you for the opportunity to speak today in support of funding for Lusher. I'm sure you agree that Lusher is a unique and a magical place. Most cities and towns in Oregon have athletic fields, at least one park or public square, perhaps a tennis court, a skate park, a gym, or a swimming pool, but I know of no other city that owns a park like Lusher that is devoted to preserving agriculture, history, open space, and natural areas. I listened with interest to the Budget Committee meeting on May 4th and Councillor Afghan's detailed examination of specifics in the budget for each department. I encourage Councillor Afghan and each of you to review the Parks and Recreation budget for Lusher, which is included in our public comment packet. The amount of red ink is distressing. Since the committee's focus today is on the capital improvement plan, I would like to speak in support of funding to approve vehicle access to Lusher. As Gail pointed out in her comments, in the 10 years since the Lusher Area Master Plan, none of Lusher's key initiatives have gotten underway, including vehicle access to the farm, which is a public safety issue and a potential liability for the city. Lack of access is also a deterrent to achieving many new opportunities for Lusher identified in the 2021 Lusher Area Task Force Report and included in your packet. Most of these activities are allowed under current EFU exclusive farm use zoning and would not require a big capital, invest, capital cost. A number of them could even create new revenues, but to initiate many of those projects, new access and parking needs to happen first. The only funding on the horizon, as Gail said, for Lusher is to compete among six projects for two million bucks from Metro. There is no guarantee that Lusher will receive any of that money, and projects that have remained unfunded for so many years will continue to languish. And without improved access and parking, we are limited in increasing activities that could bring in more revenues. <coughs> and finally, Lusher Farm Park is a resource whose value goes far beyond the city of Lake Oswego. I served 20 years at the Department of Environmental Quality and eight years on the State Board of Agriculture. Traveling throughout the state, I experienced firsthand the divide between urban and rural Oregon. I learned that nurturing an appreciation for and understanding of the importance of agriculture and open space can help bridge that divide. Lusher offers a unique opportunity to bring people together in a very simple way, cherishing our natural resources and growing food together. What better legacy can we provide for future generations? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Stephanie Halleck. You've got three minutes to make a comment. Yeah. I was in the original. I was very actively involved in the original. Yep. I'm sitting here. I was real, very actively involved in the <laughs> Can we turn this microphone on? In the, turn it on. So they can in the, uh, like the master plan 2025, I was very involved in the, uh, <laughs> in the, uh, the uh, Friends of Lusher Farms are the uh, Friends of the Farm original vice chair. I'm sort of annoyed because what these women were discussing, this sale has already been made. I mean, you know, all of this stuff was discussed. The, the access road in uh, off Rosemont was was uh, was extensively discussed. Plans, things were lines were made in the road. Part of the deal, part of the passing of the of the. Um, Parks bond was a fair amount of money for an education center, better access, better parking. There's a whole bunch of stuff that clearly, you know, that was part of the package. I myself went to uh, guy, people in youth sports and went to them and said, listen, you ought to support this and the quid pro quo will be uh, the, the uh, of people will support you. This shouldn't be a, you know, th th what they are, what you just saw is, um, the legendary, which I guess is now, we're going to have a, to have a Lake Oswego uh, City swimming pool, okay? They had been, you know, and that had been going since 1984. And, what's, and what they're asking for, they're, they're lining up. I mean, they're, they're, in the, they're in the next red herring. 
but they shouldn't this is this is they should uh, this, this is there should be no sale made you know, the sale is made and we should and we should uh we should take what they say very seriously because it's an outstanding resource it's an outstanding resource but we have all they, it has been discussed and discussed and discussed and it's offensive that they have to get up here and discuss it again thank, thank you member steve Dow. Hmm. thank you all right are there any other public comments? All right. So we move on to the next agenda item. Okay, let's uh, move on to Eric Rooney's presentation on the capital improvement plan. Um, <laughs> Welcome, Ms. Rooney. Good evening, uh, Budget Committee members. My name is Public Works Director and City Engineer. With me this evening is my um, our Assistant City Engineer, Stefan Broadus. He will be um, making the presentation regarding the capital improvement plan. Um, just I mean, a couple opening words about the capital improvement plan. For public works in the engineering department, this is really our core guide and principles and a work plan for the work that we do, which is to uh, maintain and replace infrastructure. And at its core, our infrastructure is all about you know, four basic things, water, wastewater, storm, and transportation services. And we have a full service city here with all of those components. We're fairly built out. I think you would all agree to that. And what we are is we're in a phase now in this city, in its age of the city, where most of what we do is replace existing facilities. Everything has a life cycle. Um, some things last longer than others. Pavement doesn't last very long, but water lines generally last quite a bit longer. So this, this is a perpetual issue for every city, which is they have capital to replace what's existing, and oftentimes in other cities they have capital for expansion. We don't have a lot of expansion here, but we do have a lot of replacement as time goes on. Similar to the presentation that we did um, in front of all of you back in October of uh, 2022, just last fall, we're gonna provide a high-level overview of the capital improvement plan and then we're gonna dive in specifically to what's proposed for the 23-25 uh, budget so that we can talk about those specifics for you tonight. So with that, um, Stefan's got about 15 slides. He's gonna get us started and um, tell the story of the capital improvement plan. Thank you. Uh, committee members, uh, city councilors, thank you for having me. As Director Rooney mentioned, my name is Stefan Broadus. I am the Assistant City Engineer, and uh, the goal of my presentation tonight is to answer these questions. So I'll start by answering what is the CIP and, and what's in it, uh, and then also discuss where the projects come from, the factors and criteria that help us prioritize those projects, uh, where and how those projects are funded, and then get into a little bit of the specific projects that are proposed in the upcoming biennium budget. So to start with, what is the capital improvement plan and uh, what's in it? The capital improvement plan is a six-year overview uh, of the improvements that are being proposed to be made on a range of categories from parks to sewer, storm, water, streets, facilities. And in those six years, uh, the first two years uh, are synchronized with the proposed biennium budget, one to one. The remaining four years are what are categorized as funded, uh, but they're not in the budget. But, so they're funded, but not budgeted. And then there's several hundred other projects that are included in the capital improvement plan, but are proposed to be completed beyond that six year timeline. So those aren't budgeted, they're not funded, they're categorized as unfunded projects. So where do the projects that are in the capital improvement plan, where do they come from? Uh, they come from a, a variety of sources. They can come from 
uh, concerns raised by citizens. They can come from uh, maintenance reports from our operations group. But most of these projects come from master planning exercises. And uh, an example of a few of those master planning exercises are shown in this photo above. Uh, from left to right, there's the wastewater master plan, the transportation system plan, and the water system master plan. And as Director Rooney alluded to earlier, the wastewater master plan and the water system master plan are very similar in that they lay out a uh, strategic approach for maintaining, essentially maintaining the current level of service. So how, what's the most efficient method of replacing the existing system that you have? Uh, there are some uh, expansions to it, but for a majority, it's maintaining the existing system. Uh, the, uh, a master plan in a sense that's not shown in this photograph, but is very much in the same spirit is our uh, pavement management plan or our uh, pavement condition Plan, PCI, if you've heard that term. And that plan, very similar to the other two I've mentioned, it, it lays out the current condition of all of the streets the city has responsibility in maintaining, uh, and, and also describes a few different investment scenarios and what the outcome of that would be. But again, it's in the spirit of how do we best maintain the system that we already have today. The document in the center of this picture is a little bit different than that, the transportation system plan. Uh, so that document identifies several projects that would be an expansion of the current system. So that could be bike lanes, sidewalks, pathways, new signals, uh, things of that nature. So it's uh, a little bit beyond maintaining the existing system and taking it to how can we build upon the system to fit our current needs. And another master plan not shown in this picture uh, because it doesn't yet exist, is the proposed stormwater master plan. Uh, so there are several planning documents that relate to stormwater in the city of Lake Oswego. Uh, there's the 1992 stormwater plan. There's the Clean Streams plan from 2009. And we also have our current, dated uh, 2022, stormwater management plan, how to manage our system. But it's time again for us to take a comprehensive evaluation of the existing system, what our deficiencies are in that system, and what are our opportunities to address those. So included in the biennium budget, not in the capital improvement side because it's not a capital project, but included in the biennium budget uh, are the means to start a stormwater master plan. So something to keep in mind. Another uh, source of, uh, of where these projects come from are council goals that are set. And so uh, most of the council goals have some connection to our capital projects. For example, this first one listed above, ensure a safe, secure, and prepared community. Uh, prepared uh, in the infrastructure world is synonymous with resiliency. And in the capital improvement plan, uh, there are resiliency projects identified to uh, to seismically, more seismically prepare some of our critical water infrastructure, as well as to implement a backup power system uh, in the event of a regional power outage, similar to what we saw in 2021. So what are the, the factors and criteria that we use in order to prioritize the projects once they're identified? There are several. Uh, most of those master plans that I mentioned previously have a prioritization component to it. A lot of those take into account, uh, as Director Rooney mentioned, uh, remaining useful life of the infrastructure, uh, the current condition of it, and uh, if it's meeting current capacity and or expected additional capacity. But there are some other factors beyond just the master plan. Some of those factors can include risks that's, that are posed by uh, not implementing that proposed project. So that can include risk to uh, public health and safety or risk to risk, I'm sorry, risk, R-I-S-K. Who's that? R-I-S-K? Risk factor. 
risk. Sorry. Yep. Um, so some of those risks can include, like I said, risk to uh, public health and safety, but also uh, risk to structural damage, including both uh, public and private uh, property. There's also uh, a prioritization component in regulatory requirements. So those can be environmental regulations, uh, but something that we've seen uh, very heavily recently is the Americans with Disabilities Act and the role that it plays in, um, in many of our projects, uh, whether they're on the uh, facility side or as we see often in the right of way with curb ramps as a part of our paving efforts. Uh, and the council goals, as I mentioned before, and another uh, opportunity to prioritize projects are where we have the potential to increase the efficiency of delivering these projects. That can be with uh, overlapping development, uh, private development projects and or uh, bundling several utility projects into one combined effort uh, under this concept of dig once policy. Uh, so next up, I'm going to discuss uh, where the money comes from, where the funding comes from to fund these projects. And for our uh, parks projects, there's, there's four uh, funding sources. There's the general fund, there's our system development charges, or SDCs, uh, bonds, and grants. For our water, sewer, and storm utilities, it's a little bit different. Uh, a majority of our funding comes from our utility fees, as seen in uh, the monthly bills. Uh, there's also a, a smaller component of that. those funding sources is there was a one-time uh, infusion of fundings from ARPA, which was the American Rescue Plan Act from a few years ago. Uh, and also, there are some SDCs that help fund our utility projects. Uh, it is important to note that uh, SDC fees are collected for utility projects on uh, new or expanding demand on our system. Uh, so uh, many developments that have a similar or even reduced demand, as was the previous use, um, won't have much of a contribution for, uh, for SDCs for the utilities. Uh, next up is the funding sources for transportation. Uh, there's a few different sources here. I uh, want to talk first about our local sources. So that is our street maintenance fee on the monthly bill. Uh, there's also the, um, the general fund transfer that is typical. In recent years, that general fund transfer was used to uh, help fund the uh, increased paving effort that is was a part of the five-year pavement management program. Uh, so those are our local sources. There's also uh, our regional share, uh, our, our city of Lake Oswego's uh, share of regional sources. So that includes gas tax and the uh, county vehicle registration fees. And uh, similar to uh, what I've mentioned for some of the other project types, there was also some ARPA funds for the transportation projects. And uh, similar to the utilities, there's also uh, SDC uh, funding, uh, but again, for new or expanded use of the transportation system. So the uh, final component of my presentation tonight is I wanted to walk through the uh, project types and highlight a few of the projects. This is not an exhaustive list, uh, but just some of the projects that are included uh, in this proposed biennium. So for parks, uh, some of the projects proposed are um, it's the LORAC, uh, there's the Recique Park Phase 1, uh, as well as components of the golf course. Uh, for our uh, water program, we have a few different projects listed up here. One is a continuation of a program that's been ongoing for years. It is uh, rehabilitation of our distribution system. So in other words, it is replacing old pipes in the ground. Uh, we also have the backup power at the uh, river intake pump station as well as the water treatment plant that I mentioned before. And we're also going to replace one of our aging uh, pump station sites. Sorry. The wheel is very touchy, very sensitive. Okay. Okay. 
Jonna, can you like arrow me over? <laughs> Wait, no. Okay, no, I, I think I can. Yes, thank you. Sorry, very sensitive uh, wheel on the mouse. Uh, next up is our, our sewer projects. Uh, so we have uh, sewer projects in uh, various phases and, and about to begin construction is a replacement of our trunk sewer line in the Blue Heron Canal. And in the uh, design phase is the repair of uh, some of, of uh, issues identified on our Lake Oswego interceptor sewer. And, and then finally in the uh, planning phase is uh, some improvements to the Foothills interceptor sewer, uh, which is associated with the uh, wastewater treatment uh, facility. W O two nine eight. Blue heron, blue heron trunk. Blue heron trunk is the sewer project. Yes. Yep. Okay. Next up is a uh, stormwater section of the CIP, and there's a handful of projects shown here. And that picture shown on the far right, uh, that is. Uh, the stormwater pipe that runs underneath Blue Heron Road. And uh, as you can see in the picture, the bottom of it is rotted out. Uh, and so we would look to be replacing this infrastructure. Uh, the risk posed here, we talked about risk as a prioritization factor earlier. The risk posed here is a potential collapse. And so in, in a collapse, not only does the pipe obviously lose its ability to convey stormwater, uh, the road above it would also collapse. And this is, uh, if you're familiar with Blue Heron, this is uh, below a dead end street. So, so there's obviously some risk uh, in the deteriorated condition of that pipe. Uh, we also have a project that is about to start construction. It, um, known as uh, Daniel Way Channel Stabilization. And that project through uh, decades of development has um, revised the alignment of where that stream goes in that area. And uh, has, as a result, has created quite a bit of erosion to the point where the integrity of the road and the road base are being threatened, which could create uh, quite a bit of damage to our infrastructure. So that is. Um, channel stabilization project. And then finally, the picture in the center here, uh, I'll mention uh, Fish Street and Lake Bay project as well as Redford Avenue project. Uh, those are similar uh, projects in that uh, they're in areas that are uh, without stormwater infrastructure. So there are, are no catch basins, there are no curb and gutter, there, there is no pipes, there, there is no outfall. Uh, it is without a stormwater system. Uh, and as a result, uh, Ponding like what's seen in the picture is uh, is a result. Uh, so those two projects will look to address those. And finally, our uh, street or transportation projects, we look to continue, albeit at a smaller scale, our pavement rehabilitation program uh, coming off of the completion of the uh, six-year pavement management program. We also look to complete some signal and crosswalk improvements that were a part of a grant that was awarded to the city. Uh, we have, as recently prioritized by the council, we have a batch of pathways that are uh, nearing the completion of the design phase and uh, will go to construction in the very near future, as well as a, another batch of pathways that look to get started um, in the near future as well. And then finally, up here on this list, as I uh, alluded to earlier, uh, we look to begin implementing uh, what was identified in our Americans with Disabilities Act ADA self-evaluation and transition plan, a programmatic approach uh, to reduce uh, the uh, deficient curb ramps throughout the city. So as a, as a recap, uh, there's in, this is a recap of the number and scale of the projects shown just in this biennium, so in those first two years of the CIP. So we have five parks projects uh, with an estimated cost of uh, just under $43 million. We have seven water projects shown for a little over $9 million. Uh, three sewer projects for right at about $8 million. Seven stormwater projects, just over $5 million. 14 transportation projects for just under $18 million for a total of 36 projects. Uh, at just over $83 million. So that concludes the presentation. Happy to uh, answer any questions that you may have. Thank you.
Yes, thank you. Um, committee Vice Chair Elizabeth Seller. I just had a question on the Lake Bay Court and Fifth Avenue. It was described as improvements, and I'm just wondering, is it the full meal deal? Is it partial? Kind of just if you could expand on that a little, given we've had a lot of public comment on it. Sure. The scope of that project will need engineering evaluation to determine. There's a number of, of different possibilities. Uh, it's possible that uh, the, the most efficient and effective solution there is to extend um, the, the drainage into the lake, uh, or, or it's possible that it could connect to some existing stormwater infrastructure that is a little bit away, or it's possible that uh, the interim solution uh, could be enhanced to be sufficient as a, as a permanent solution. We don't know yet. Uh, evaluation, analysis, modeling, all of those things will need to be performed to get a full understanding of the water flowing there and how to best um, how to best process that water. So to answer the question, more analysis needs to be done. And so maybe just one follow-up question. Is the m funding that is in there is just for the analysis, or is it an estimate of what a solution could cost as well? Sure. So the, the funding amount shown for that project uh, in the proposed CIP is a million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, which would fund, which we expect to fund the actual construct, uh, the actual project, all of it, the evaluation, the design, the construction of the project. Um, it's it's hard to put a number on it at the moment because we don't exactly know what the scope is going to be, uh, but we're fairly confident that that will be sufficient to complete the project. Thank you. Thank you. Just as a follow-up question, do you estimate the project to be finished within the next couple of years, or when will this be finished? Most likely. So, we, we you know, for a project of the average size for the city, we typically will will um, look at uh, design taking about twelve months, sometimes a little bit longer than that, and then construction following behind that. So, it's likely that the project could be completed within two years, but again, it kind of depends on what the scope ends up being. Okay. Thank you. Have you started with the analysis of that area yet? So we've done some preliminary analysis for the sake of developing an estimate uh, to include in the CIP. We, uh, we wait for the project to be, f to be adopted, to be funded, before we begin full engineering analysis because it includes cost. So we want those costs to be approved before that starts. Perfect, thank you. Great, any other comments on the stormwater? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Councilman. Mm, um, no, I just wanted them to comment on the, I know it's nothing to do with the stormwater, but the unfunded project of the Lucia. Okay, so uh, if, let's, before we go on yeah, from there, let's okay, finish yeah. up the stormwater comments. Storm Member, stormwater, if we don't have any more comments on the stormwater and, issue. Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. I also want it because I, I know Miss um, Rooney know about uh, you know my neighborhood over there. There is a problem, a big problem of uh, stormwater, and I don't see it here. I know there's priorities, but there is a creek. I don't know the name of the creek. That's around. Uh, it's on Lake View and. Uh, uh, Warren Court, what happened in that court is when the water, like when there is a lot of water on the creek, it came to the houses there. And, you know, we are nearing flood in those houses. And with the rain I see coming, someday it's going to come into the houses. I know uh, public works, they come, they did their best, and I think there should be something that's done on that creek. Is it something that's... Uh, Councilman, um, what is your question? Yes. Huh? What is your question? No, my uh, question is what are we doing with things like that? Because I see, okay. I don't see them in a project, and they are things that will be a problem in the future. So that, Near future, yeah. That concern is on our radar. We have identified that project is in year four of the CIP, so it would be in the funded but not budgeted section. 
Page 44. Page 44. Okay. It's, it's, Warren, so, it's Warren, um, Court, right? Warren Court, right? Warren Court? Yes, yes. It's there. Thank you. Thank you so much. There are a lot of questions right now, so let's, uh, let's let me continue my thought on um, who raised their hands first. Um, I just want to make sure that the stormwater discussion is done before we carry on. You still have a stormwater comment to make? Yeah, just uh, a question. Go, go ahead, Member Alcab Abria. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thank you for the work on, on this. Um, uh, Director Rooney, uh, we've seen some recent uh, public comments you've made about the, I think you said tens of millions of dollars would be needed in stormwater. And I'm just wondering, I'm not asking for a precise number, but I think it, it given that that's a, a ponderable amount of, of, of resource allocation that's going to be facing the city probably in the near term, would it be possible to have a single line item that has unfunded projects to get us to a certain level of acceptability that might, so that we know it's not three million or four million, but we should know if it's 10 million or 50 million. Is it possible to do what I would call in project management a rough order of magnitude estimate, a single line item to say this is an estimate, we don't have hard bids and so forth. Is that possible? It's really, it's not, but that's what exactly what the master plan is for, is the master plan does that work. It identifies the needs at a very high level like you're talking about. And once we have that, then we incorporate that into this document as well. So for instance, back in 2013, I know we did the, the wastewater master plan. And at that time we identified $80 million worth of projects. Um, that's the number that we started with in the CIP after that. We need to do the same thing with the stormwater, get our master plan developed, and then put a number to it. The tens of millions that I said is me on the street talking to a reporter trying to give a sense of magnitude. And that's based off of the fact that we don't have a lot of stormwater infrastructure in some parts of the city. So it's going to be a significant amount, and that was used mostly for, to, to kind of make an effect of that it's not a simple, solution, there's not a simple uh, low cost solution to the stormwater problems in the city. So, so do you think that we'll have that sort of master plan and the, the resulting numbers of rough order magnitude anyway, say by in a year or is it going to be a couple I, of years? Or? I, I'd like to say we'll have it for the next biennium. So two years from now. Mm -hmm. and, and right now, I mean, I, um, you know, we'd add that to however much we have is already identified in funded stormwater. So yeah, so at the next, I would hope, it'd be nice to be able to put an order of magnitude in there for, um, we have 21 million identified as unfunded right now. And this list will probably be two to three times longer when we get a master plan done. Okay, thank you. And we'll do that in the next one, you bet. Thank you. Um, Councilman Ali Afghan, you've got a comment on stormwater? Go ahead. I had a similar comment to uh, Al uh, I think you were quoted in the paper some time ago that it's going to take a lot of money to do this, and uh, it makes sense to put it under unfunded, whatever it is. I think I just heard you saying that when we do the master plan, this will be addressed. So thank you very much. The other comment uh, question I had, the Fifth Street uh, stormwater that we have listed here, I'm assuming it's the same project that we just heard the public uh, comment about, correct? Yes, correct. Thank you. Those are the two items I Great. had for so Anybody far. else? Steve, do you have? Okay. Um, Councilman Aaron Raff. Uh, I'm assuming that the, the Blue Heron Road Rehab Project got pushed out because of the Blue Heron Sewer Project, just because of the logistics of doing two major projects on that small road right back to back would be challenging. Um. The Blue Heron Road Rehabilitation was scheduled for 23-24, 24-25, and it looks like it got pushed out. But Blue Heron Trunk is in 23-24 now. Yeah. It's, I'm assuming it's just simplicity of getting stuff done. It's actually unrelated. So so they... that No, I know they're I, unrelated, but... Well, the timing of them is unrelated as well. Uh, they, these have been pushed back in time to, in order to do some of the um, 
other projects in front of it that are proposed earlier. Just to um, on Blue Heron or just other in, in the city, projects? other paving and other stormwater projects. Both. I would have just answered yes. Like, yeah, it's just hard to do two major projects on that small little road. But yeah. I, I, I could have. <laughs> it, it was not the truth. So. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, um, Mayor Joe Buck, you have a comment? Thank, yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, the, the ADA transition plan, we recently adopted an important body of work. Um, uh, is there, I just want to ask how we're kind of integrating those projects into the, into the, into the CIP and kind of in a, in a way where we're tracking the progress? So good. <laughs> sure, so a couple things on that. Um, if you recall, and I'm going to do this from the hip on the numbers. There was $200 million identified. So it's, it's like a little mini master plan, if you will, um, of ADA needs throughout the city. The vast majority of that 208 million, 200 million of it, was for roadway work, um, mostly ADA ramps and sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So we have in the, on page 42, um, we have identified uh, as a starting point, uh, 750000 per year to work on sidewalks and ADA ramps, going through the prioritization mm -hmm. from that document. I envision as the rest of the city gets used to um, identifying which projects they need to do in their individual departments, we may need to add a few things here, but it's relatively small compared to what we need to do in the right of way. So right. we have started to put that in here as our effort to make progress towards okay. that. I know we're going to do annual check-in on that plan progress. I'm just thinking yes. of how it integrates into the budget and just yes. kind of quantify some of that. And any major facility upgrade that you're doing will bring it into compliance with the ADA. Lower Act, for example, will be built exactly. the ADA. If we do library projects, we'll, exactly. we'll make sure we comply with the ADA. So every capital project is an opportunity to comply with the ADA. And implement that transition plan. Similarly, I mean, the climate action plan as well. So. Every capital project is a chance for us to catch up with uh, regulatory or policy requirements. Okay. And, and we will, I think you had asked that question, we will be coming, I think it's scheduled for December, the goal of every December coming to you and giving you an update on what did we do this past year. So we're in our first year, you know, we, we adopted the plan in December. Our goal is to come back to you again in December and say, here's the... 50 ramps we did, and here's what parks did to improve their situations, and here's what the library did. So we should have a nice annual report for you to show what progress we're making in those in that particular area. Okay, that's Separate great. Separate from the CIP, but some of that is in here. Okay, that is great. I thought I was going to have a question. One of more course, question. Go okay. Ahead. There's go on ahead. the um, uh, similarly, and you just mentioned the climate action plan. So the the capital we have budgeted, I think this came up last meeting too, for vehicle purchases. You know, those will be. I mean, are those going to be aligned with our climate action? We've been trying to. Do yeah, more I, I mean, I think as all the department all directors talk to you about that, uh, they evaluate whether an electric vehicle can be purchased and still meet their operational needs. And, and in fact, we're working on a fleet policy. I'm glad Eric is here. Um, sure. So that we essentially we start with the presumption that we will buy an electric vehicle, right. and then uh, if there is a, a use case, a reason why we need a differently fueled vehicle, then then there's a process for uh, determining uh, sure. whether we have to buy an internal combustion or a diesel engine because of the lack of availability of vehicles or the specific use of the vehicle. So again, our assumption in the future is going to be we buy EVs uh, unless there's a reason why we can't. Okay. And we see we've been moving in that direction. We are moving in that direction. You also see that show up in terms of installation of charging at city facilities, right. which actually we don't want to become the reason why we can't actually have an electric fleet. Right. Yes, exactly. And then just one other uh, question slash comment. The, um, you know, under the unfunded part, we have a portion of RASIC in the funded category, but it's just a portion. If, if we could add the remainder of RASIC into the, unfunded category. I think if everybody, uh, yes, that's right. The uh, receipt phase one is what's funded. Receipt phase two is unfunded. So if everyone on the budget committee is okay with that, we'll do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if I totally agree with that. Uh, so could you put that picture of receipt park back up? 
So what is funded in the budget? I think you all uh, may recall from the budget message. What is funded in the budget is the construction of the parking lot, the stormwater facility, the restroom, and the skate park at Reseek. What is not funded in the CIP is the construction of the ball field, the picnic area, or the playground at Reseek. So about half of Reseek Park is funded as part of phase one in, in the proposed budget. And I know we're about to have some conversation about that and about half of Reseek Park is unfunded. So again, the ball field, the playground, and the picnic shelter are unfunded. So what the mayor is proposing is that we reflect that in the CIP. And the reason it's not in the CIP is simply a matter of timing. When we put the CIP together, uh, it's advanced in the budget. So it's just a phasing state. So I apologize for that. So can I make a comment first? Yeah, I, I, I absolutely do not understand yeah. the advantage of not putting phase two or phase N if there's more than, I, I, I don't understand the advantage of not showing what the number is. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just telling you it was a timing problem. So are we saying like it, it, it went to print before? The CIP went right, to print exactly. before we divided the project yeah. into so two it, So does that mean we're going to see an addition to the budget to reflect the phase two of receipt? Suggesting that you amend the CIP to include re receipt phase two well, in the unfunded list. I That's have what a I'm huge suggesting. comment for that yeah. one. Um, I do take into consideration what Steve said just now about Lucia Farms, and am I correct to say that if we give Lucia Farms any kind of um, budget, we cannot fund Receipt Phase 2. Yeah, so uh, that's, I think, is a matter you guys are going to want to deliberate on. Let me just sort of explain where we are with, with Lusher. Um, it, it, there are no easy choices. I think I mentioned to you at, during the budget message that unlike past years, you don't have a capital reserve. So if you decide you want to fa uh, fund any uh, other project that comes from the from general fund resources, you have to, I, I, I'm going to get in trouble. You, you really have two choices. There are no good choices. Choice A is you reduce another park project, and the only one you could reduce is Reseek Phase 1. It's the only one because we've already let the contract on the golf course and on the Lorac. So don't really have the option to decide not to fund those projects any longer. So you could reduce the skate park, which is what phase one. Now, I, I'm not telling you this is the answer. I'm, I'm going to give you your choices, and then you guys can decide. I'm not telling you what the choice is. You could reduce the skate park. Your only other choice is to reduce the transfer that the general fund makes to the street fund. That is completely discretionary. That's uh, Chair it. Carson. Uh, I think there are two topics here. One is what goes on the CIP and what's the process to get it there. And the other one is the looser conversation. I still have the question of what makes it to CIP. And from my perspective, if there is a project in the future and it's not funded, we got to put it there so it has a placeholder. So that's. I think if we can agree on the first one, then we can say phase two is going to go there. It doesn't mean it does get priority over anything else. It means at some point in the future, we're going to put money into this project. And then we can talk about Lusher and how do we prioritize it, if we prioritize it, how much, and so on and so forth. All right. Um, members, <clears throat> do Chair Carson. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's have Member Steve talk, talk first. Okay. Yep. Well, I, I, I'm the I am the field guy. I mean, I was you know, I am the field guy as far as the sports field guy, and I and I'm disappointed that Rasik's not being done. But the deal is, in you know, somebody appointed me emperor, which I'm apparently with my plaque, I'm not going to be appointed emperor, despite my <laughs> efforts. Um, I would uh, I think that the uh, the Rasik property the project. And the lecture uh, uh, improvements need to be done ought to be done simultaneously and regarded as the same project, because what's going to come? What because because you're going to let air out of the balloon, on one way or another. Correspondingly, um, you can get, you can get uh, support from the farm people and you can get support from the youth groups, youth sports groups, and both th both those will be effect are effective lobbying people. But I just think it's a because it it's not. There, there was a lot of thought put into the lecture farm thing, and, and it's it's and it's been and it's been it's 
glorious, but there was going to be an education center. There was there was there were two or three different things that weren't going to be you know comparatively smaller amounts of money, and aren't being done. They have been shoved aside, you know. And in point of fact, so is the receipt field. I mean, so is the receipt field. And I mean, it's going to be it's going to be it, we're going to come we're coming into a period here that. Um, and I know in our budgeting, we're saying, well, in two years from now, we think inflation is going to be okay. I don't think there are a lot of people who are business guys who share that. You know, I think that we're coming in for a tough period. I think that the, I think, and I th think we've got to, I think we have to, have, should be hard headed. And I would be, I would vote, I'd hell, I'd vote against the receipt field. Um, I'd vote against receipt field, which I may get, you know, rope uh, hung for. Um, if, if it meant that we the, the luscious farm stuff wouldn't be done, I mean, it, just make it one project. I mean, and however you want to make it one project, and then over a, a year or two, figure out how to do it. Okay, thank you for your comment, um, uh, Member uh, Shannon Shannon spoke earlier. Oh yeah, Shannon spoke oh. on top of Steve. Yeah. So Shannon will go first. Sure, Carson. Oh, sorry, I didn't. Okay. I didn't realize Shannon was on here. Okay. Yeah, she's um, on Zoom. Uh, go ahead, Shannon. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm out sorry. of town. So yeah. Um, I, I would feel more comfortable waiting to fund the creation of a new park, the Rashik Park, until after our current park projects are complete, the Lorac and the golf course, only because um, they are high cost um, projects and they have, uh, we've put more money into them than we originally expected. I just think finishing those projects before we start a new park is my opinion. And I did like city manager uh, Bennett's option a would be to reduce the park project for the rashik park thank hey, Carson, you i feel like we're Shannon in deliberation Grady. right now and yes, there are so yes. many questions that no yeah have. and so yeah i, I mean uh, this for for rashik we are not right, discussing right. Um, we're not discussing I've got, this right, i've got every this. member pointed out so I let's mean. have uh, uh member shaima shaley um, I'm going to give everybody a little break from park conversation and go back to your presentation and ask you a question. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have questions too, but okay. it seems like all of a sudden we're someplace else. So, yeah. so, so back to this. Um, so just a curious question really on page 42, I'm looking at the street funded projects totaling about 27 million, right? And on page 43, the water fund being funded at about 40 and a half million, correct? And on page 50 and 51, I see the unfunded projects for each of the respective um, areas. And on the pathway one, the street fund, I see the total unfunded, and I'm assuming this is only the ones that we actually know um, exist as a project, right? Because we know everything is not in here yet. But that unfunded totals 140 million, which is about 16% funded, um, 27 over 167, right? And then on the next page on 51, the water fund is about 50% funded, um, leaving 41 million, just about the same funded on page 43. I guess the curious question is, has this historically been that water takes priority over a street just because it affects more things? Or um, is it that the, the pathways and the streets are not necessarily impacting the bigger population of the city, and that's why there's a bigger list and a larger unfunded? Um, let me take a stab at that. So let's be clear. Um, water and transportation don't compete against each other right. or the other. All utilities are separate. So the funding that goes for those cannot be sh shared, I, well, excuse me, can't be swapped. I can't get a loan from the water fund to help do pathways. That's totally illegal. It stays in their own lane. Right, understood. Um, the difference here is in the water master plan uh, that was shown, it is, as I think um, Stefan mentioned, it's really about replacing the existing system we have. So it's a fairly defined area uh, or, or, or magnitude. The transportation system is very different in that there are a lot of missing pieces. As we've talked, there's over 200 pathways that don't exist that need to exist based off of our efforts in the transportation system plan. So they are completely separate issues and have no connection priority wise. Um, the reason there's so many transportation projects identified 
is this town uh, started as a fairly rural environment, and when we acquired through annexation more county roads, things like that, they didn't have the infrastructure. I've, I know many of you have heard me say this, and I'll say it again. We have rural infrastructure in an increasingly urban environment here, and the transportation infrastructure needs to catch up, and hence there's so many deficiencies. Sorry, that was a long answer. But no, I, I, I followed you. Thank okay. you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. Thank you. Can I bring, um, the, uh, give uh, Councilman Messina? Yeah, no, I just, I, you know, I just hope that we're not discussing the skate park here, the funding or not of the skate park. It is funded. We are moving on. We can talk about other things that we haven't done. and. I'm sorry, you know, I, um, and also I really want to, to give a kudo to uh, the staff report from Erica, and it, you are doing a wonderful work, and everyone who's working in Lake Oswego knows that what you're doing is, is extraordinary. I just want to say thank you for your work. Yeah, and now, Razik, we're not talking about that, I hope, you know. Like, and I'm not doing that. We just have, I hope it's not the discussion of funding or not the skate park. Respectfully, though. Yeah. Because it is, yeah. But the deal is, is, is this forum, this forum, what, I'm just going to finish. This forum is to discuss stuff, yes. you know? No. Um, let, let me, let me, yeah, Lynn, run, like the next run, person run, who is going to speak is committee. Vice Chair Elizabeth Zeller. And I have a question about bridges. So, and I'm going to build a bridge. Um, just more, the Lakewood Bay at North Shore, is that like the other part of it? Because a section was done. I, I, I was just curious. It's in the unfunded, the bridges unfunded. Yeah. And I just wasn't clear what that was. So just to clarify, uh, the, the recent work done near the North Shore Road Bridge is yeah. was not the bridge. Yeah, it was that's, the okay. uh, retaining wall approach to the bridge. Gotcha. That's what I assumed, but wanted to clarify. Thank you. I had the same All question. Right. That was a good question. Right. <laughs> Councilman Aaron Rack, is that your comment? No, my comment okay. was similar to Masan. Like, we're not deliberating on Rasik. So I don't know why we were going down that road. So you said it, Masan said it, that was it. So. Okay, Councilman uh, Ali Afghan. Uh, thank you, Chair. I have several questions from uh, the for the capital improvement project, and then a couple three questions from the city manager Bennett from follow up from last uh, meeting. Uh, Tyron Creek wastewater plant. Are we going to spend money on it? And if yes, should we add that to the CIP, whether funded or unfunded, or ten years from now? So I, I said this last time, no, it should not be in the CIP because it's not a capital project. If you want to uh, make a budget note on the sewer fund budget, that would be an appropriate place to note. I'm going to say this again like five million it's, times. It's, We're not building the project. We're contracting with somebody else to build that's, the project. I think an asterisk would be because I also, I'm, I'm switching now. Uh, I also got several inquiries about the new wastewater treatment, and everybody's asking why is it in in the CIP, and I have to explain it to them. So I think is it asterisk in our book solves a whole lot of answers and questions. Thank you. Next question was Rasik, phase two again, chair. I think we need to talk about if we're going to spend money in the future. That's a project. It's unfunded. We have to keep track of it. So not just RASIC, any, any project. So I don't know how we're going to uh, go forward with this. Uh, are we? So at the, uh, we're making some notes here. And at the end, when you're ready to deliberate, okay, we'll, we'll suggest you. to you changes okay. that you have made in the budget that you'll include as part of your action, okay. including adding a RASIC phase two project. Y'all can then later decide how big or small that project is. OK. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Are we are we doing any electrification in especially in Lake Grove area, adding uh, chargers? Because that would be CIP. 
So you're going to hear on Tuesday a report from uh, our sustainability program manager that the first step is going to be to develop a charging master plan, a charging strategy. So okay. we may be, but we have we have no identified projects or identified costs. We don't put things in the CIP unless we actually know what the project is. Okay. That's awesome. That's good to know. I wasn't suggesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm going back to you guys. Very tense tonight. I have to go through my notes now. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to city manager Bennett. I think we talked about the wastewater plant, the asterisk there. Uh, last time we talked about the police department headcount and uh, electric vehicle. Do we have a response? He's here. Do we invite him up? Yeah, absolutely. And Chief, you thought we wouldn't uh, call you up to the podium, huh? He knew. I, I, I'm ready. Are you invested? <laughs> I'm vested. Here we go. I don't fit in the chair, but here we go. Well, I think uh, you need to take that vest down because I'm trying to get you more head counts. So one of the conversations we had last time was that based on the number of uh, calls that are coming in uh, since uh, several years ago, the numbers are going up yet the head counts are not going up. Do we want to be proactive or do we want to be reactive? And I don't know how busy uh, these calls are uh, causing work for your workforce, but I wanted to make sure that we're having this discussion because I don't, I, I don't really want to be reactive to our safety and security. Yeah, and I I would say that I would agree. I don't want to be reactive either. And I would say that based on council actions and budget committee actions in the past, we've added positions to the police department that have gotten us to the point where sometimes that added number increases the number of what looks like activity or calls for service. So I, I've been here for the last eight months or so, and we're taking some time to really take some make some analysis and determine what are the needs for the police department, whether it's police officers or other staff to support what it is that we do. But at this point, I really don't have a really good answer for you as far as adding positions, but I'll tell you that it's a great position for me to be in to have a budget committee ask, what do you need? Because there are a lot of places around the state of Oregon and around the country that don't have a council or budget committees that are willing to ask that question. So I appreciate the, the concern and the look in, into the future as to what are the needs. I think that's something we can certainly have ready for an evaluation for the next budget cycle. Thank you. Uh, second question for you was, you're spending $510,000 on new, new cruisers. Are any of them going to be electric vehicle? We don't have any plans for any electric vehicles at this point. Um, I don't know what the infrastructure for the city looks like as far as charging stations within City Hall. I drive an electric vehicle, so I, I know what the limitations are as far as how long it takes to recharge them. Uh, Realistically, if we went all electric in, in police, we would have to double our fleet just so that we would have vehicles that we could drive and would be adequately charged for us to be able to respond for service. So right now we're using hybrids, so we're making that move. We become more efficient, and I would assume that we'll continue to evaluate how we can do that. Okay. Thank you. Did it? That was my questions for you. <laughs> that was easy. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Thank you. Uh, one last question for uh, city manager. I don't know if this is the place to talk about it, but I want to know where is the place to talk about it. And that is, if we have a fire department like the South Shore, it's not seismically uh, upgraded, we're going to have some kind of a uh, earthquake in the future, and I don't want us to sit back and say, why didn't we talk about this? Again, it, this forum may not be, but I want to know where do we talk about this and where do we have that conversation? So uh, actually, uh, the executive team uh, for the past two years has recommended actually the council add a, a replacement of a station uh, to 14. I always get it wrong. 211. 12. Yeah, 12. <laughs> See, I always get it wrong. I can't be a firefighter because I'd go to the wrong station. Um, 
uh, on the list for council goals and uh, council hasn't prioritized it. So the reality is I think it'll take a community conversation because it'll probably be in the range of eight to $10 million, which we don't have. So we'd be having to ask for additional funding or to really get aggressive about grants. So the truth is, if the council is interested in replacing that station, I think you need to put it on your goals list and we need to engage the community and in sort of its status and condition to figure out whether or not people in the community are willing to pay to upgrade it. Thank you, that answered my question. Uh, Chair Carson, I don't have any more questions. Thank you. Uh, I believe uh, Member El Calabria has uh, some comments. Is it, is it in order for me to ask a question about the um, pavement condition index right now? I Are we in that place? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So a, as you're aware, I mean, a lot of, a lot of citizens and residents, and at least I've spoken to, are not happy that the PCI, according to the, to the proposed budget, will decline. And we understand that there's only so much money and so forth. But my question is, it's similar to the other other question I was asking about the the ability to uh, make an estimate and include it in the CIP as unfunded, an amount of capital that would maintain, at a minimum, maintain a PCI of 70, which I think is a, actually a disappointment to me personally because that's lower than we have been, but um, it, at least. Uh, a minimum of 70. Is that possible to make a ROM estimate that we can put so we have transparency and visibility to the task? Um, unfortunately, I'm going to echo Director Rooney's response to the previous question by saying no, it's it's not really possible. And, and the reason why is, is the PCI, Pavement Condition Index, and those scenarios that are put together in our report uh, is a snapshot in time. And so uh, it's reflective of if you were theoretically to take a large sum of money on the order of magnitude of $70 million and go spend all $70 million this summer repaving a bunch of roads. Um, so there's a couple, there, it's a theoretical concept, but it's not a tangible single project that could realistically be implemented. Um, there's not, a contractor pool in our region that could actually implement that project. As the projects get um, uh, constructed and time goes on, the treatment needs of each individual segment will change. It'll change from a slurry seal to then an overlay to, to then a, a grind and paint to then a reconstruction. And each one of those carries with it uh, a, a huge range of, of potential cost. So um, uh, our budget report or budget options report or the PCI report includes a scenario in order to maintain a PCI at a certain level. There's so many different variables that go into that. The number is, uh, it's not really actionable. It's, it's very intangible as far as an actual project goes that we could list a single line item as an unfunded project. Okay, I, I respect uh, your expertise and knowledge. I, I can only say that uh, it, it's not entirely comforting to hear that because if we don't know the size of a problem, it's hard to know how to tackle it uh, going forward. It sounds, the way you've described it, it sounds insurmountable, which very few problems actually are, right? They're all addressable. So I guess I, my only comment would be, if that's the position of, of staff, that every future event is an estimate with, with variables, a number of variables that will determine the outcome. We're not asking for precision. We're asking for a, the best guess, a rough order of magnitude. It, if you're saying it's absolutely impossible, then I, I guess we have to accept that. Another way to look at it is, and this is getting a little nuanced, is, is to um, highlight the difference between the word project and program. So pavement management is a program. It's a never-ending perpetual process in which we will um, pave some years more, some years less. It is not a project like the wastewater treatment facility in which it has a clear start, middle, and end. It is a never-ending program uh, that will go on forever. You, you, 
Can I say too? I, I think that you should not think of what they just said as the as no. It's a question of where is that conversation appropriate. And I would say it is very much a policy conversation the council has had in the past and should have. It is a program and activity of the city, but it is not something that should show up in your bending plan because we don't know how much. This, remember, this document is a spending plan. It creates legal authority for us to spend money. It's not, it doesn't have, it doesn't contain all of the policy or strategy or program that the city engages in. So I think that you're absolutely right, that it's a policy conversation that needs to be held by the council on an ongoing basis. But it, because we can't tell you that the number is going to be $70 million in the next five years, and we can't, that's what Stefan just said, it shouldn't show up in the document that sort of outlines what would it cost to do certain specific things, because it's constantly changing. Yeah. I, I respectfully, I just respectfully, I mean, I don't disagree that it's a policy matter for the elected officials here to, to chew on, but um, I, I just respectfully disagree with that approach. I'm, there, there are a lot of other things in this budget uh, that are identified as unfunded where we don't have all the details. We don't know precisely what they're going to cost. They're, they're there, I think, to give us an idea of the future and what our strategy is. Al, I think it is a policy question because if city council gets together and said the policy is we're going to maintain our roads at 70 or 80, make sure it happens, make sure it's funded every year, and make sure we have a program that does that. Right now, we're asking something for something that they don't know what the policy is. So I think you should put that on the city council. How do we want to maintain our roads? So seven years from now, we don't have another $17 million hitting us. So instead of that, we spend $2 million a year. But what is the policy that we need to put in place? So uh, I'll take that action item to uh, take it to the city council. Okay. Yes, Thank um, you. I would like to make another comment. Didn't we spend a lot of money on the analysis and the audit of the PCI? And didn't that, that should have been rolled into a policy of some form. That's just my comment on that one. Yeah, again, sometimes we have programs, and I, these guys did a brilliant job, if you didn't see it back in no, January, mm -hmm. um, of presenting sort of the results of the large infusion of cash. But just because you have a program doesn't mean you actually have the cash to execute the projects. Right, and so I hear the conversation about like we know there's this giant need out there, and I think that's what the presentation back in January told us. But what we don't have is that means we're going to go pave a, a Avenue and it's going to cost X. That's the difference. Is is what what we would go put in the budget right now would be a, like a a very theoretical number based on what we know in in 2023. That's what I heard Stefan just say, as opposed to we would have to reconstruct B. We would have to or fourth. Do you see the distinction? So there, I absolutely agree there are unfunded projects in the CIP, and the number we've put against them is uh, some number that was created at a point in time, but we're still talking about specific projects, right? Whereas with a pavement management system is, is a whole bunch of projects that right now don't have a funding source. Why are we spending this or that? Well, I think if I can, I, I mean, I think our, our policy has been, and the engineering department has done a great job of um, funding uh, projects that get the, where we get the biggest bang for the buck. We the the the, uh, the dig once uh, policy as well as a part of that, looking at the roads that are most traveled, and and we're looking at the roads that were at that point of deterioration where they could use that additional slurry seal to buy more time. Um, and, and prevent them from going that extra, you know, falling off the cliff, you know, as, as we call it. So I think the way that they've taken the limited funds that we have in any given year to spend, the, the, the city's done a great job uh, spending those appropriately on roads that are the most well-traveled so that by and large we have these great main thoroughfares all throughout the city and uh, they've taken a good approach to it. So I think that's kind of been the, the policy. I mean, because there's no limit to the amount of money we can spend on paving roads. I mean, that's just a fact. It's not that complicated. So we, we, we budget what we can towards continuing to chip away at it. You know? Great. Thank you. Um, members deep up. The only thing is, and I understand you can't, you, you're talking about not funding specific uh, projects, but it's a matter of commitment of, it's a, it's a matter of commitment of dollars and, and with the idea that the money that is being committed is going to be spent well. And everybody thinks you know, around the table, you know, I was, 
like the movie uh, Casablanca and the winds of Vichy. Everybody around here thinks the winds of Vichy are, are all going to blow the way they're blowing right now. And I've been around long enough to see in a, you have an economic downturn. The economic downturn, uh, the city doesn't, the city's very well run, and I've said that many, many times, but it, 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 it tightens things down, which is going to happen in the next couple, three years. And, and you'd think, the way that people think in this room is, there is about the way about half the people like us will think. And there's a bunch of old cranky guys who, you know, uh, the cities, they don't think the money's spending, not right now, but there will be a bunch of old cranky guys who are going to start to be concerned about how this uh, money is being sent by the city. They are going to go to roads because, the, because we, our commitment has got, we were spending $12 million, then we had a $6 million for it by and now we're at $4 million. And and in an inflation dollars, that, you know that, and so our commitment is going down, and and it completely turns. I think that, you know, some of us have been around a while. Turned that turned the meetings were much different than this. Turned the city on its head, as far as, and so we, <clears throat> the idea of committing, you know, at least at least committing dollars and 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 saying, I mean, it should be in, in my mind, it should be in a covenant. We're going to spend sick, we're going to spend X amount of money in the roads. Period. No matter what, no matter else what happens, because it will make it in the maybe ten years isn't a long time, but a long time for me. But it's going to happen. It's going to turn, and there's going to be people who are going to want to spend more money on roads, and it's going to impact. And, and there's going to be, and we've uh, what is it, FTE? What's full time employee? You know, we were we, we've been in these meetings where we're, there was a goal on how many FTEs were, were, there were and what they were doing, and people are going to planning and asking, well, what's that person? Why do you have to add that person?" And that's going to happen again. And and the trigger of it happening is the deterioration of roads. That will be that is the trigger. That's the thing. And and city manager talked about the paveathon, and, and I used to be a skeptic about this, but I've been around this long enough. It is. It's something to look forward to. It is a storm around the corner. So, I mean, what? So what Al's saying is maybe we can't. You know, we can. We can. We can. I think we should. Um, we should uh, budget money that uh, that's difficult to budget and assume that the city, which they always do, will spend the money properly. I think we're making you know, that turns along. It's a difficult to turn around a battleship, and the battleship is turning and and. The period coming up, I think, is going to be. I, th I think we all agree on Th that. Thank you. But, um, uh, I, I have to say this. Uh, 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 Councilman uh, Ali, could you hang on? Uh, let me have uh, Councilman Masim yeah. speak first. Yeah, and, and honestly, folks, like about roads, for me, tangible things is what we go in Lake Osigo. When I move in Lake Osigo, the road was worse than they are now things, their project coming, and in this budget, there's the street funds, there's amount of money. We cannot take all the budget of Lake Osigo and put it on roads. That's not the only thing. The roads are good, some are bad. We know, uh, council, like, Director Rooney always say, we are a, a village turned into a city. Uh, an urban area, there's a lot of things to do there, like the steam water. Did you see the rain two, three days ago? Monday. If it happens, we will forget about roads. It will destroy more than roads, the pipe, the sewage and stuff. So these folks are engineers. They are workers that know more than we do. All of us, we just like say things, but they know more. And when I say they know more, they are people that are in the field. What they see, we are in our rooms or in our salon and think of, yeah, we didn't blue here on all this road. But these folks, they go. I was shocked that you even put the boons, the, the warrant court thing, honestly. And I've been there and seeing. I was shocked when I see it in here. So let's give people, you know, like what they do best, let them do it. They know because when the roads are deteriorating, it's Director Rooney who's going to be the one who will feel that more. So the, we have six million. We don't have 12 million. We're not going to get to we, because folks who are saying that, and that's my conservative friends, 
where are you going to get the money? I'm going to ask the question to you. Where are you going to get the money to do the roads? You're going to take it from the safe route to school? You're going to take it from the police or from the fire marshal? No, this is the money we have. That's what we have. PSI and all that, those are just, uh, you know, words that my friend Jeff Goodman loved to put, but <laughs> it's uh, not tangible. That's not things that... that Measure when we walk in Lake Oswego, we see that roads are fixed. They are beautiful. You go to the Boone Ferry, it's wonderful. There's a project for Lake View, McVeigh. There are a lot of things. What do you guys want? I mean, you know, like you become cranky. That's like you say, <laughs> we should, you know, just come on, folks. Yeah, I but mean, you know, let's. With the product of yeah. like seven or eight years of antagonistic meetings. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, the Thank roads you. are nice. But it was a product of seven or eight years of antagonistic meetings. They don't know it was. All right, yeah, Councilman. It's good now. Thank you. Councilman Ali Afghan, you have a comment. Yes, thank you. I think we're all saying the same thing, but we're missing the process. For example, engineering is sitting here and they're saying, we're going to maintain our roads. And this is our budget, and we're going to prioritize here and there. And we'll... the question is it's like a house maintenance. Do you spend money on a regular basis to keep your house up to date and prevent it from falling apart? Or do you wait to uh, spend a lot of money on it? So that's, I don't think that's, I think that's the conversation for the city council to set a policy, whether we want to keep our roads at 50 CIP or 60 CIP or 90 CIP, then the engineering will take that and come back with, this is how much I have to spend every year in order to maintain our roads based on what you want. So they did that already. They, we, we had that in a council meeting. Yeah. So we're there right now. All right, um, Councilman Aaron Raff. Um, Ali, you asked uh, the chief about adding headcount. Yes. We should have been here last year. We had a great time because we had a great council goal, and we actually. Allocated four FT four FTEs last four, year, George. Two years ago. Two years two, two years ago, but we got them. I think they actually got hired last year. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we have an unbelievable city who's behind uh, funding our police, and we had, and we and we got four, and I think everybody is aligned on uh, supporting fire and police. So I'm with you on that. Let's keep pushing. Excellent. Um, bridges. So we have three of the four bridges on here, um, unfunded, but. I just want to be clear, there's nothing structurally wrong with the ones that are on the list here, or mm. are, is this more preventative? What, give me kind of a, because um, West Bay is not on that, the one, the West Bay Bridge is not on there, so. Yes, it is. Is it? It's the last yep. one. The oh, last West one. Bay is South Shore, I'm sorry, yep, okay. Yep, yep, So, um, page uh, 45. Uh, we have a little bit of a bridge master plan as well that was done about mm, six, seven years ago, I think that um, went through and uh, rated all of our bridges based off of ODOT inspections and whatnot. And these are the prices, or the prices, the costs for replacement of these bridges. Some are in better shape than others. Um, so for instance, I will tell you, uh, there's two on here, Springbrook Creek at Summit Drive, and um, I think it's the West Bay at South Shore. Those two we, Every chance we have to, with ODOT, we put those on the list with ODOT in search of grant mm -hmm. money to help because these are sizable amounts of money. The worse the bridge is, the better the chance we'll get some money. So we kind of... But my, my question is more like, because they're unfunded means there's no urgency right now. Like, they're all structurally no safe. We're, there's no money for it. Not too. But they all could be replaced right now, yes. The only one that's um, new and in, in fabulous shape is the now. one that was done um, on South Shore, the other South Shore one, and it's, uh, I want to say it's about 2005. Oh, so 2006. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. So all of these do need to be replaced, and if I could replace them today with $27 million, we would. It'll be more of a safe, like a we're all good kind of, <laughs> kind of answer. But, yeah. <laughs> but none of them, I will say this, I mean, um, Springbrook has a weight limit on it, so okay. we we do those preventative measures. Every, every year we get ODOT inspections and they tell us, if we need to do something or not okay. regarding the safety of it. So they're not in gonna fall shape, imminent. Right. I won't say that they'll make it through it quick though. Got it. Okay. Thank you. No.
All right, thank you. Um, I think it's, let's take a break. It's been an hour and a half, and uh, let's take a five minute break and come back to deliberations. Thank you.
back. Can you hear me? All right, we're gonna continue the deliberations and I would appreciate if nobody talks above me, if I give you um, the right to speak, I will make sure that you have the right to speak and somebody else should not intrude into anybody's comments or speech. Huh? Yes, ex exactly, Steve. Okay. My All last right. meeting, I'm, I'm going to go down like a Viking. I'm going to be burnt in the middle of the floor. All right. Dude. <laughs> okay, before we start, um, um, Vice Chair Elizabeth Zella made a really good comment um, to me. Could you please share your thoughts? Oh, sure. I was just going to say, um, so that we're not here all evening, although I do enjoy spending time with all of you, um, just would encourage all of us, myself included, to be on point and concise, and if a point's been made, that we not repeat it. Thank you. Okay, so let's continue the deliberations for the um, CIP. Any more um, comments or questions? All of a sudden, everyone. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I'll call maybe this is a Ruff. question for Ivan. <laughs> um, page forty-five. You don't have. To, you may be able to do this from there. Uh, page 45, athletic fields, artificial turf for 1.15. You can't do I'm, that from there. So. I'm sorry? He has to come to the microphone. Oh, okay. I'll wait. Um, <laughs> unfunded parks, athletic fields, artificial turf, 1.15. Yes. Is that for specific fields? That's uh, specifically for artificial turfing the infields of our existing grass um, fields at Westlake and George Rogers. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions for yeah. Park Director? I, yeah. Um, Park Director. Park Director. <laughs> Sorry. Um, do, I, do I understand that we want to remove the grass from Westlake? Uh, no, it's oh. actually, so the question was on page 45 under unfunded in alphabetical order, there's athletic fields and it says artificial turf, mm. 1.15 million. The specific project definition of that is the infield, the baseball infields oh, okay. of both Westlake and George Rogers Park, but leaving the, the native grass in the outfield that would for soccer pitches and lacrosse. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you're interested in. Thank you. All right. Anybody else has any more comments? Member Al Calabria? Just have a question. Uh, is it in order to make a motion now regarding uh, an addition or an amendment to the proposed budget, or, is it, or should we wait? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, um, now, it may not require a motion. I, I understood that you were amenable to adding a footnote uh, or an asterisk to the sewer page with, to the effect that we would, and I'm going to be specific about my request, and you may or may not agree with this. I, I'd actually recommend that you do make it as a motion so it's on the record. Happy to have it there. Okay, and, got it. And uh, then the committee can vote on it, and it's clear okay. that the change is made. Councilor Afghan, if uh, I know you you were on the same point, so if I misstate something, I, I would be willing to accept an amendment. But it's hey, it's basically this that we add a footnote to the sewer page in the CIP, which makes a notation of the new wastewater treatment plant, and it specifically identifies the total capital and total operating costs of the project, even though it's separately funded, not funded in this budget. That's part one, and the, the portion of that total capital and total operating outlay, which is Lake Oswego's responsibility. That's part one. Part two is, by my lights, there are five places in the current budget that, we're, that you're asking us to approve today where we are, in fact, paying for support resources. In one case, it's the purchase of property. In another case, it's um, phase one, the preliminary services agreement. Yeah, so I'm sorry, I thought you were in the middle of a motion, so I didn't want to yeah. interrupt. Um, <laughs> I am so in the I, 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 um, let me make a suggestion. First of all, you're not going to put it in the CIP, you're going to put it on page 11. Page 11. And you're not going to do it as a, you're going to do it as a note, a budget note. And so what you're going to do is you're going to have a budget note that says uh, uh, the, um, proposed, or the, not proposed, the department budget or the sewer fund budget includes advancing uh, the replacement of the Tryon Creek wastewater treatment plant, which includes da 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 total capital cost of X, 
uh, uh, which is going to be split, debt finance. It'll be just like, um, you see down below there's a bullet that says capital outlay uh, includes blah, blah, blah. So you'll have the proposed, but you'll put it under the budget note, not in the CIP. So up above, right? Say yeah, page you're talking about page 11. Page I, agree, 11. I agree with you. Page 11, and then you'll, it'll say the, the proposed, or the not proposed, the, the department uh, budget for the upcoming biennium 2023-25 includes the first phase of the, the Tryon Creek Wastewater Treatment Pro Plan project, which ultimately will include da 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 It will put all the details in there. I think that um, there was an exchange of emails among some of you today that includes all the details. So it'll be the total capital cost, the split between the city and the city of Portland, uh, the amount of financing that we'll be doing, the purchase of the land, and then um, and uh, a sort of a little discussion about the operating costs. Because in future years, you'll see the wastewater pr uh, plan uh, plant both as debt service, but also as M&S payments to the third party that's going to operate it. So in the future, it'll be very clear. But in this budget, you're just basically going to describe the project in total. Does that sound what y'all think is right? Yeah, so my motion is what she said. OK, yes. that's fine. But, but, I, but, I, 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 but I just want to, just for clarification, it, my, my suggestion and request is that it include plucking out and identifying in that footnote the items that we're approving in the biennial and it's not being separately funded in phase two it's it's being funded Abs by no us absolutely today. i i completely agree with you okay thank you but then i'm sorry right, we have a then what she said okay any more discussion on this motion chair carson i okay. think uh so far the city manager has owned these uh footnotes and i don't think we need a motion to ask her to put in the comment, do we? I, you might as well just, you I, I think it would be it. great if yeah. you made okay. the motion so that it's Done. very clear. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I all right. second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carried. Okay. Um, as a note going forward, any future votes need to be done via the roll call list. We're at that point in the meeting. In the meeting, so I'll go through each person, and they'll say yay or nay. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. What were we doing? Um, all right. Next discussion. The other item I think that y'all wanted to handle was to add a, a a project for parks unfunded, Receipt Park Phase Two, which I'm going to estimate at three million dollars or so. <laughs> about right 3.9 2.5 2.5 3.5 3.5 for phase two I would make that motion that we add receipt phase two to the unfunded CIP for 3.5 million I second that all right call for discussion nope all in favor oh going through Joe okay. Buck yes Ali Afghan yes Nassine Mbu yes Trudy Corrigan <clears throat> Yes. Aaron Raft? Yes. Rachel Verdick? Yes. Lynn Carson? Yes. Elizabeth Zeller? Yes. Steve Dodds? Yes. Shannon Grindy? No. Al Calabria? Yes. Hima Salehi? Yes. Gary Rabello? Yes. All right. Motion carries. Yes. All right. All right, um, up next for anything else for deliberations or addition or... Can make a motion? Yeah, yes. Discussion? Um, Member Steve Dobbs, go ahead. What's... Well, I, I want to make a motion that we uh, include the uh, Lusher Farm, farm access, environmental classroom, and uh, the urban agricultural expansion as an unfunded part of the CIP. Uh, can you say that again? Well, I guess, okay, yeah. then I've screwed up. I withdraw all that. I'm confused. It's already there, so we're already, we've already got it. Yes? Yeah, yeah. These are okay. all, all right. the issues in the infant. Yeah. All right, excuse okay. me. All right. Um, Councilman Ali Afghan? At the Lusher Park, I heard what was said. I, I have very specific questions. Are we breaking any laws? Did we make a commitment that we haven't delivered? 
do we have any contract that we have to comply with? Because I was uncertain what was being said and what is required. So no, you're not breaking any laws or contracts. So I think you all recall, those of you who are on the council, when the bids for the LORAC and receipt came in, um, uh, uh, Director Anderholm came to talk to you about the fact that if we funded both of those projects, we were actually uh, pretty, well, I, my recollection is we were about five, six million dollars over available funds. And so uh, the direction I got from the council during goal setting was to, f you, during this budget process, to find the money to finish those projects. The school district graciously came forward with another million and a half dollars for the capital construction of the LORAC. Um, I'm sorry, Lake Oswego Recreation and Aquatic Center. Um, and we had some funds that we had set aside in the previous budget uh, for um, future capital that we dedicated and were able to close the funding gap for the LORAC. Um, and then uh, I, I scraped fund balances throughout the city's budget um, and uh, reduced the transfer from the general fund to the streets fund to pay for Reseek Park phase one. So if you choose, uh, and I think that um, the, the statements that you all have made about including the folks who testified are all absolutely true, which is all of these projects all of these projects have been through extensive public planning and participation by the community. And anyone who participated in those master planning processes has an expectation that the parks and, and, and facility plans that they help create will one day be funded and put into operation. So I think the testimony you heard today was just suggesting that Lusher should be uh, seen as a higher priority than, than we uh, are able to fund. It is completely in the discretion of the council and the, uh, the council primarily and the budget committee to decide what capital projects you're gonna fund. There is no project on our unfunded list. There is no project on our unfunded list that we do not need to build. There are 300 and some million dollars of projects on the unfunded list. So. Lusher is no different than the fact that we have $240 million worth of unfunded pedestrian safety projects and $27 million of unfunded bridges. And to, to the discussion on pavement quality, we have an expectation in our community about the condition of our roads that right now with current resources, we cannot afford if we're gonna do these other things. That's what the budget is, is a series of trade-offs, just like your budget at home. Uh, oh. City Manager, thank you for explaining that. Uh, thanks for talking about the LORAC and also the Rasik Park Phase 1. I don't want to talk about those two projects because those decisions are made, and if anybody has a challenge with that, the difficulties with those decisions, they can come to the City Council and have that conversation. This is not the forum. But I was trying to figure out if we are missing any commitment for Lusher Park, then we should talk about it. But if we're not missing any commitment, then you've answered my question. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other comments, <clears throat> deliberations, adjustments to the budget? I do want to make the motion. I was looking for the motion that Shauna very it's kindly. It's here. Yes. Yes. So, how can we make this motion? <laughs> All right. I, I second it. I move to approve the proposed city, uh, the proposed budget city budget for the 2023-25 biennium of four hundred and fifty-six million nine hundred and eighty-six thousand eight hundred and ninety-eight as proposed and amended, amended with the property tax rates as shown in the budget, the rates of 4.9703 inside the LO School District and 4.5884 outside the LO School District for 1,000 of assessed value. Do we have a second? The whole thing. 
Okay. Also approve the amount of one million nine hundred and sixty three eight hundred and nine hundred and sixty three thousand eight hundred and thirty for the fiscal year twenty twenty three twenty four and two million ninety thousand four hundred and twenty six for fiscal year twenty twenty four twenty five for the general obligation bond levies. Second. All right. Okay. Joe Buck? Yes. Ali Afghan? Yes. Masina Boop? Yes. Trudy Corrigan? Yes. Aaron Raft? Yes. Rachel Verdick? Yes. Lynn Carson? Yes. Elizabeth Zeller? Yes. Steve Dodds? Yes. Shannon yes. Grindy? Yes. Al Calabria? Yes. Shima Salehi? Yes. And Gary Rebello? Yes. All right. Motion carried. Thank you. So, um, Anthony, Anthony is going to speak. Thank you very much, Chair Carson. So I'm going to talk about the, the protocol. Uh, what's coming next for the budget is that uh, what you just commit, your committee just approved is going to go to the city council to be considered for approval on June 6th. And uh, so the next item it, to mention is that the municipal grant subcommittee is still active and the application process for those grants closed yesterday and that there were 17 applications with a total request of $132,310. And we have $80,000 that is funding that's available. So the subcommittee, which consists of Vice Chair Zeller, um, Councilors Wendland and Corrigan, and uh, members uh, Slahi and Rebello, we're all going to meet on June 1st to decide which nonprofits will receive grants. The list of those funded grants will then go to the City Council to be considered for approval on June 20th. Also, as far as protocols go, there will be two open budget committee seats and two alternate positions that need to be filled. The selection committee for these positions consists of Chair Carson, Mayor Buck, and Councillor Afghan. Uh, I will also attend and act as a non-voting staff liaison. Uh, these interviews are scheduled to occur on June 5th. Lastly, we plan to have onboarding for these new members and alternates prior to the next budget committee meeting. And I will now turn it over to City Manager Bennett to talk about meetings going forward. Yeah, I think uh, if it's all right with the committee, uh, we are thinking that we'll have a meeting in the fall, primarily focused on orientation and a refresher. And for those of you who went through this uh, orientation, a uh, refresher, what does the budget committee do in the fall? Partially because otherwise the folks get appointed in the 1st of July and they don't meet until the following year. And then uh, the city council this last year set a, a council goal to uh, really take a longer term view, although Sean does the six year forecast, a longer term view of the city's finances and to committee member Dodds's point earlier, uh, to think about the economy and what are the various scenarios. And I'd propose to you that we use a meeting next spring uh, with the citizen budget committee to sort of advance that goal. It means councilors, if, you, if you're okay with this, it means we won't finish it in 2023, we'll sort of use the off year. Because the benefit, I think I told you when we had our pre-meeting, the benefit of a biennial budget is you can use the off year for financial planning as opposed to just budget processing. So how does that sound, everybody? All right. At, at, at that point, we'll have the results of the audit. We'll have the first six months of the, of the biennium we're going to enter, plus we'll have some more data. Um, I really do feel like we're in a pretty significant time of economic uncertainty. I read a lot. I told you last time I read a lot of different papers. I listen to a lot of different economists. And uh, I, I don't know if I've ever lived in a time where the forecasts about what's about to happen to our economy have been so divergent in terms of the conclusions that people reach. So that tells me that nobody actually knows. And so hopefully a year from now we'll have a little better handle uh, on how um, the current environment is affecting the city's financial capacity. I will also say the last recession is the only, the only bright side of it, the one we had, the big one, was that capital projects got a lot cheaper for local governments. So um, I'm not hoping for a recession because that's not good, but uh, there might be a silver lining if there is one. So. All right. Thank you. Does that sound amenable to everybody, though, that we used the off cycle last yes, year? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Jen? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank Good you. Job. Good That's job. great. Good job. Good job. Congratulations. So are we not meeting next Thursday? Correct. You can have the 18th. That's rough. That's rough. Good job. You can come on down, Aaron, if you want.